I'm Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann with the 127th Public Affairs Office. For several months now, you have enjoyed content on demand and live television streaming right from your desktop. This channel is the next installment in a long list of innovations by your PA office. Your comments and critiques are greatly appreciated. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome to May Super Drill. This is General Slocum, and this is what I know today. Today we're coming to you from our world-class firehouse here at Selfridge. Our firehouse here just is kind of a quintessential example of some of the greatness of this base and of our organization. Because here, our fire department not only serves the 127th wing requirements, but also the rest of Team Selfridge, our other uh, tenants that we have out here, but they also do community support. And here in our firehouse, we have Title Fives, we have Title 32 technicians, we have AGRs, all statuses working together for the good of all. This is the synergy and the efficiencies that make Selfridge great. So it's a wonderful opportunity and I appreciate our firehouse hosting me for this RSD video. Well, speaking of safety, we are coming into the time, if you notice, the grass is turning green, it's getting a little bit warmer, uh, it's a nice wet season, everything's starting to grow. You can just tell that the boating season and everything else is right around the corner. You know what that means? Summertime, summer activities. We get to do some fun things, fun sports, great stuff at home. But I think we've all seen some of those horror stories, you know, starting up the grill for the first time, leaving it on too long, lighting it off, and you hear the people with the hair on fire running the other way. Uh, there's a lot of things we do we haven't done in a while. There's a lot of equipment that hasn't been used. I'm just asking you to be vigilant, to do that little personal risk management. When you're going out to do something for the first time, please be a little bit careful. Uh, you know, make sure that we're not doing that dumb, dangerous, different type of a thing. Dumb, dangerous, different means don't do it. Or at least step back and make sure that you're thinking twice about taking those steps. I appreciate you being vigilant with safety because that's what's gonna make us a good organization. We have to get all of our guardsmen home safely every night. So speaking of our great guardsmen, we have an opportunity on the 4th of this month we get to honor our civilian employees out here at this base. We're gonna have our civilian awards ceremony. From the different categories, we have submissions, we have a great panel that's looking through, putting in the votes, uh, and we're gonna to get to announce the winners of these civilian awards on the 4th. Uh, it's very important. Our, our Title V and our state employees that are part of this organization uh, are the bread and butter of what makes things work here at Selfridge. They're foundational to tying this wing to Team Selfridge and what this installation is able to do. Thank you all for what you do, but especially to our award winners, congratulations in advance. One of the challenges that we've had in the last couple years is we've actually gone over to this new EPR system that has the static closeout dates associated with it. So we are now writing evaluations on our drill status guardsmen. The tough part of this is that in a lot of cases we have part-time drill status guardsmen writing evaluations on part-timers. We haven't done it before, it's new to us. When are you available to do it? There's so much that's going on in drill. What type of time do we have available? And in a lot of cases, maybe you haven't directly supervised somebody in months uh, and haven't had a chance to see, to give them that feedback of what's going on. And in our whole pipeline of administration, we've about quadrupled the workload. So all of a sudden we have a lot more evaluations coming through the system. So we need to take just a little bit of time. The goal is to give good, honest feedback to our airmen. So I'm asking you, let's take just a little bit of time, focus, give that feedback. They're really easy to do once you get used to what, you know, do one or two and you're gonna find out it's very easy. But our airmen need that feedback. We document what's going on. It's gonna be important for them as they advance as we look for force development opportunities and to set this organization on a path for success in the future. Speaking of setting the path for success to the future, what I'd like to do now is cut over to Chief who's with us today, actually sitting in the legal library there in uh, the headquarters building, who's gonna talk to us on a subject that's important to all of us. So Chief, over to you. Thank you, General Slocum. Team, welcome to May's RSD, or as we're calling it, Super Drill. You know, we've talked about this for the entire year, and so it's finally here. We're gonna have an opportunity to do some great things, training, deployment preparation, 
running with the hogs. And then you'll have actually two days without the leadership here because we're going to head up to Lansing and do our joint leadership training with the Army. So on Saturday and Sunday, we'll be out of the way. And so some great decisions can be made by the great people that are going to get the things done that need to get done because the bosses will be out of the way. So let's start with what's going to happen this weekend. As I said, training, deployment preparation, and then of course spending some quality time with your battle buddies or your fellow wingmen that you don't get to see all the time. So please take advantage of that. On Friday, I think we're all excited about the fact that we've got the running with the hogs. You know, the 127th maintenance group has put together a great event and all of us need to be out there. We need to be cheering our, our fellow wingmen on. We need to be running. We need to be passing out water. We need to take this time to get to know the, the airmen that are with us on a day-to-day -day basis and some we only see once a month. But this is a great opportunity to do some bonding, some mentoring, some fellowship. So please take advantage of it. And then, of course, on Friday as well, Cinco de Mayo. Now, listen, folks, this is a great time to go out and enjoy what we call a celebration of the Mexican culture. Mind you, it isn't celebrated as much as Mexico as it is here in the United States. But we want you to understand that this is a great opportunity, again, for you to have some great time with wingmen that you don't see very often. Be careful. Be responsible. No drinking and driving. Call someone, call an Uber, call a taxi, but make sure that you show up for the rest of the training weekend. We want to see you. On a serious note, we just finished up April, which was Sexual Assault Awareness Month. You know, we had an opportunity to get some ideas about what has been going on in our institution and, of course, in our DOD with regard to sexual assault awareness. But April, by no means, is the end of sexual assault awareness or our responsibility to it. This is an enduring responsibility for every airman. And I'll tell you, I heard it once before, and I think it's important to remember, and hopefully you will too. We have to make it possible for every predator to feel very uncomfortable in this organization. They can't come here thinking that there's a way to ease in and just blend in with the crowd. They have to understand that we are an organization of character and it cannot and it will not be tolerated. So we're going to talk about the entire four day weekend we've got coming up. First and foremost, let's enjoy this time together. Let's take care of each other. Let's look out for each other. And if we're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, please be responsible. Let's make sure that our fellow wingmen not only get back to wherever they're staying safely, but they get up and they show up on Saturday morning and they return to their families. And lastly, you know, I'm in the law library here on Selfridge and our superstar JAG, Captain Jason McNally, has done phenomenal work helping with deployment preparation. And one of the things that really eases the minds of our families is that they're taken care of. So getting the powers of attorneys and the wills done is extremely important, not only to the member, but to their families for peace of mind. So thank you very much, Captain, for doing that. And for all the men and women that are taking care of their families, thank you for being responsible in that respect. Now, General Slocum, back to you. Thank you, Chief. Well, when we talk about caring for our people, we certainly have some people that have already headed out the door for RCP-6, or the Agile Combat Support Deployments, that are gonna be going on between now and about the July timeframe. We're gonna have 150 people from this organization going to places all over the world for up to six months at a time. These mostly are our drill status guardsmen. We've been trying to focus in this wing on making sure that we have good customer service. And the reason why is because when our drill status guardsmen are here, we want to make sure that they understand that they matter. As we're caring for our people, we also have some new additions. We have our, our new SARC, Mr. Orvi Baker, uh, who's with us now. Fantastic, coming to us from the Army in North Carolina. Uh, we're looking forward to Orvi being a bigger part of our organization as we go forward. Also on our team now, our new Yellow Ribbon Coordinator, Christy Smolish, has joined the team. Uh, they're all going to be part of this family, this caring for people family that we're putting together that's going to hopefully be a world-class organization where people come first and people matter. You're the best. We have the trophies that prove it. We have the awards. You have the ribbons. But we're only going to get better as we go forward, and we do that one person at a time. So thank you for joining our team. Things are looking great as we move forward. But speaking of looking great as we move forward, man, there's a lot going on. When it comes to the F-35, uh, we're going to have a site survey in July. So Colonel Holtz is taking the lead for us in terms of our local team here. Uh, we had a team that we sent out to Vermont as part of one of their recent SATAFs. We're learning a lot. What does it take to support the F-35? What structures, what infrastructure, what training abilities, what do we need from our people to be able to support the organization when they come in and look and decide what base is going to be awarded the F-35s, the two out of the five bases, that it's a very clear choice that Selfridge is number one. Guess what? We're also having a huge air show this summer in case you haven't heard. You can read about it on the app. There's a whole part for that. Download and use that app. 
Uh, but we're also doing a lot of preparation work. Certainly Colonel Davis and his team have been putting in some diligent hours with all the intricate details of, of making this choreography work for the air show. There's opportunities for volunteerism. Each organization is going to be part of the concessions plan. You can help uh, escort VIPs and visitors to the base. You can help with some of the functions that we have for the air show. Big picture, Friday is going to be our family day. That's an internal. This is the military side. We're going to have a lot of great events, picnics, concerts, dinners, everything going on on the base on Friday. Open our doors on Saturday morning. Invite the public in to see the wonders and amazement that is Selfridge Air National Guard Base and Team Selfridge. We look forward to it. Please let me know if you're interested in helping us out with that. Needless to say, there's a lot going on right now. As you can see, you look around the base, people are just busy as ants. Uh, making things happen and by the way doing a wonderful job being ready standing ready as our wing motto says we stand ready on all the different missions that we have from agile combat support to wonderful global mobility on the KC-135 side to our persistent attack out of the A-10. So keep up the great work and have a good drill weekend. I'm General Slocum and this is what I know today. Hey there everyone, I'm Staff Sergeant Tracy Keller here with your look around the Air Force. Two F-35A Lightning II aircraft deployed to Estonia for the first time. Twenty airmen accompanied the aircraft to Amari Air Base where they're participating in the first ever F-35 training deployment to Europe. This marks an important milestone for the Joint Strike Fighter program. This deployment allows the F-35 to engage in familiarization training within the European theater, reassuring allies and partners of U.S. dedication to enduring peace and stability in the region. A combined team of Air Force Global Strike Command airmen launched an unarmed Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. The ICBM was equipped with a single test re-entry vehicle which contained a telemetry package used for operational testing. The test launch allows for the collection of data for continuing force development evaluation. Launch tests like this one help ensure the United States' ability to maintain a strong and credible nuclear deterrent as a key element of national security. The Community College of the Air Force hit a milestone with its 500,000th graduate. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Khalith Wright recognized Senior Master Sergeant Dwayne Caudill as the milestone recipient. Sergeant Caudill, a reservist with the 302nd Maintenance Group at Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, completed his requirements in about six months, all while working as a parole officer for the state of Colorado. Chief Wright said the fact that his graduation coincided with the 2017 Senior Enlisted Leader Summit was perfect because they were able to celebrate the milestone in front of 350 of the Air Force's total service Senior Enlisted Leaders. For more Air Force stories like yesterday's Air Force, Blue and the Air Force Tech Report, make sure you check out our YouTube page by searching AFTV Radio. And that's your look around the Air Force. Defenders, I just wanted to take a minute and tell you I really wish I could be here with you as you're heading out the door on the deployment. I got a note the other day of when you were leaving and I was all excited to be able to come out there. I know it's an early morning hour, uh, but I was looking forward to being with you. Much to my chagrin when I looked at the calendar that I'm actually not going to be in town. Uh, but I do want to make basically give you a send off message. I certainly appreciate your professionalism and your ambassadorship and what you're doing. Be quick to call us if there's anything as an organization we can do to help. Uh, if your families, for you, or anything that goes on, be quick to call us and we'll make sure that we get this whole team working to support you while you're out there doing your job for our state and for our country. You're doing great work. Godspeed to all of you. And once again, I wish I could be there in person to shake each hand and to talk to you as you're heading out the door on this deployment. Do great work and be quick to call and we look forward to having you back home. Thank you very much. Dr. Love here. The game is which is better. Slips, trips, and falls is a leading area of Air Force accidents. Most can be prevented by simply making a better decision. 
climbing on ladders or aircraft, walking through a cluttered workspace, working on stairs, consider what could go wrong and make the better decision before an accident occurs. I don't know. I should have made a decision. On Friday, April 28th, Selfridge Air National Guard Base traveled to St. Clair County International Airport to take part in the first of three events titled Inspiring the Next Generation. So we're doing a series of three Inspire the Next Generation events. One is in St. Clair County, one in Macomb County, and one in Wayne County down at Detroit City Airport. We worked with the superintendents of St. Clair County to bring 300 kids from all the different high schools, ninth and 10th graders, to bring them here and show them all the cool jobs we have careers actually in Southeast Michigan and at Selfridge. Why we picked ninth and 10th graders is so they can talk one-on-one -on -one with guardsmen and find out what it takes to be competitive. What do they need to do between now and their senior year to be competitive for the job they want? Friday's event in St. Clair was focused on women in aviation and featured female aviators from the 127th Wing, Coast Guard Air Station Detroit, female representatives from the Civil Air Patrol, and a skydiving demonstration from the Misty Blues all-female parachute team. Women in aviation at this event, as you can see, there's probably 50% of the 300 are women. We had an all-female parachute team. We have a women in aviation panel with professionals. Like, these girls are having a great time, and the, we're getting the, the true message out. Along with the demonstrations, the event also featured a robotics laboratory from the St. Clair County Technical Education Center, model aircraft and quadcopter stations from the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and both flying and static displays from the Tuskegee Airmen. Today, we are here at St. Clair County Airport to try to influence the uh, school children around the airport to pursue careers in uh, aerospace, uh, aviation, and just a technical field. We're here to try to influence these young people to go into those types of careers because they are going to be very uh, essential and they're going to pay a good salary. The theme, Women in Aviation, drew focus to the need for females in the aviation industry. Students were able to engage female airmen from Selfridge Air National Guard Base in a panel and Q&A session with the goal of bringing exposure to past contributions of females in the armed forces and the opportunities they have to lead in the next generation. There's a, uh, a lot of young women out there who may not realize what some of the opportunities are available to them in this area. And by coming out here and showing them, letting them meet people, and we are able to tell them our stories so that they can see where we came from and the struggles and the challenges that we had, maybe people will understand what is open to them and what is available. This event was the first of three being held this spring, aimed at inspiring youth in southeastern Michigan to consider a career in aviation and learn the steps needed to achieve their goal. On May 19th, Macomb County will host a Michigan Defense Opportunities event, and on May 26th, Wayne County will host a Tuskegee Airmen Heritage event at the Detroit Waterfront. I think that they were um, exposed to something that they haven't been exposed to maybe before that's very unique um, to our region and very unique to our capabilities that we can, that we can share with them. So I think that they were very excited, and, and hopefully we opened up a lot of ideas for them. For the Michigan Air National Guard, I am Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann. Every single aircraft that ever got off the ground was built to fly. Jets weren't meant to sit still on the ground. Speed, lift, movement, momentum. This Air Force wasn't built to sit still and wait. That goes for all of us. We have to be able to do the same things in new and different ways. It's time to become the Air Force we need to be, not the Air Force we used to be. The Profession of Arms Center of Excellence is here to re-engage and reignite. We will educate and inspire. He will not sit still. In 1947, 
Air Force Manual 3515 outlined what it took to be a leader in the new Air Force. It was a break from the Army and focused more on an airman's mindset. This was not a guide for soldiers. It was a guide for airmen. This evolved into the core values we know today. Integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do. You don't enforce the core values. You lead by living the core values. Learn to lead yourself. We have the tools to help you be better. Better people, better airmen, better leaders. We offer online books, in-person classes, videos, and one-on-one -on -one discussions that will expand your horizons and open you up to new ways of thinking. We will challenge your ideas of what it means to be an airman and take it to the next level. We are not here to spot weakness. We are here to identify potential. We are here to lift you up. The Profession of Arms Center of Excellence, PACE. This Air Force wasn't built to sit still. Aim high, Airmen. The Airmen of the Michigan Air National Guard's 127th Wing train every month in order to maintain military readiness. During a regularly scheduled drill weekend, or RSD, training can take many forms. Sometimes it's classroom training, such as self-aid and body care. It could be hands-on chem suit and gas mask training, or on-the-job training performing work in one's military career field. Tech Sergeant Joshua Kacharos, an aircraft armament specialist, spent a recent RSD replacing bomb racks on an A-10 Thunderbolt II aircraft. Right here we have a MAL-40 rack. This rack right here mounts to the undercarriage of the pylon and your bombs connect here and here through lugs. Now we have to test these for a function check to ensure they work properly before we can load them on the jet and then after we load them on the jet we do another function check to ensure electrically that they're firing correctly. Every time a new rack is installed, a function check has to occur. If the plane flies for 30 days without firing, a function check has to occur to ensure that it is still working properly and there's been no uh, any changes in the function. At every step along the way, the airmen refer to technical data provided by the Air Force to ensure that specific tasks are accomplished the right way each and every time, regardless of who is performing the task. Find out more about what the Airmen of the 127th Wing do every day and check out our newly redesigned website at www.127wg.ang.af.mil. You can also like us on Facebook and download the 127th Wing app from iTunes and Google Play. For the 127th Wing, I'm Tech Sergeant Rachel Barton. Hey there everyone, I'm Staff Sergeant Javon Smith with your look around the Air Force. F-35A Lightning IIs from the 34th Fighter Squadron arrived at Royal Air Force Base Lake and Heath, England last week. Lieutenant Colonel George Watkins, 34th Fighter Squadron Commander, says the deployment sends a strong message of commitment to European security while strengthening bonds with the United Kingdom. We're just really excited to be here. I'm really proud of the team that we have, we've brought with us. Uh, we have some uh, exceptional maintainers and pilots. Uh, highly experienced in the F-35 and we're really looking forward to working with the Lake and Heath uh, partners and with the UK partners uh, with the F-15s and the Typhoons uh, so we can get uh, good pilot training and good maintenance training out of this uh, trip over here. It's a partnership, it's teamwork between us and the local uh, population on the base here as they are working to stand up uh, squadrons of F-35s here uh, so they get to kind of see how it works and uh, feel, feel some things out, uh, get some lessons learned and we get some good training out of it as well. The arrival of the F-35s will help maximize training efforts while strengthening the NATO alliance and deterring adversaries in the European theater. Airmen from the 19th Air Support Operations Squadron earned the coveted German Armed Forces Proficiency Badge at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. 
The badge is a military decoration worn by the Bundeswehr, the Armed Forces of Federal Republic of Germany, and it's an uncommon award for U.S. service members to earn. 24 airmen participated in an extensive test administered by German liaison officers. The test is an annual one given to German soldiers that resemble U.S. combat and fitness assessments, which includes weapons, swimming, and agility testing, as well as a ruck march. The German Armed Forces Proficiency Badge is one of the few foreign awards authorized to be worn on U.S. military uniforms. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page to view more of our videos like Air Force Tech Report, Yesterday's Air Force in Blue. That's your look around the Air Force. On Tuesday, April 11th, civic leaders from the greater southeast Michigan area visited Selfridge Air National Guard Base to take part in a community leader orientation flight. Eighteen business and community leaders joined Wing Commander Brigadier General John Slocum and Command Chief Master Sergeant Tony Whitehead on a flight which lasted 90 minutes and included an aerial refueling mission with the 127th Wing Air Refueling Group. Guests had the opportunity to observe the refueling from the operator's perspective, as well as ask questions of the flight crew in order to gain a better understanding of one of the wing's most important missions. Community relations events serve to provide local leaders with a better understanding of the missions performed by the 127th Wing, the aircraft of the Michigan Air National Guard, and the importance of Selfridge Air National Guard Base. For the Michigan Air National Guard, I am Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann. General Slocum, and we are coming to you today from the St. Clair County Municipal Airport. What a wonderful opportunity. This is one of many events we're doing for community outreach. In this particular case, it's about showing what we do at Selfridge, what we do in our local community, the wonderful opportunities that are available here, encouraging that next generation. We have about 300 high school students here this time, and this is, like I said, just one of many different events we're going to have throughout the summer. What a wonderful opportunity which leads right into what we're going to do in August, which is going to culminate with our open house and air show. If you want to learn what we do at Selfridge, what a great chance it is to come out, talk to our people, see the missions. We want to show you what we do as your hometown Air Force. Dr. Love here, talking with General Zano, 96 Test Wing Commander. They do a lot of interesting testing down here. And sometimes I bet people call a knock it off for risk management. What happens if somebody calls a knock it off and it turns out you could have kept going, but they called a knock it off anyway? That is a great question. Uh, and, and I'll tell you that the first thing I need to do is pat them on the back for making a gutsy decision. Because you can imagine if you are there in a control room executing a high dollar value test and you're sitting there wondering if you should make a knock it off call. Uh, I absolutely want people to believe that they are empowered to do that if they think that the mission is in jeopardy. And, and you know, the worst that can happen is that we step back, analyze and, and talk about it, but we all learn something and we all emphasize that every member of that team has a vote and every vote counts. It doesn't just count, every vote is essential to ensuring what we're doing is safe. Thanks for your time, General. My pleasure, thank you very much. The newspapers called us fly girls, like it was cute. It was okay. They called the men fly boys. But the message was pretty clear. There were people out there that didn't believe we could do it. We had to prove ourselves. Here's the thing of it though. We all have to prove ourselves. When your country takes a leap of faith, you have to take that same leap. They've placed their trust in you. In the Air Force, nobody will ever give you a job they wonder if you can do. They give you jobs they expect you to do. For most people, trust is something you build up to. For an airman, trust is where you start. Trust in your ability. Trust in your commitment. Trust in your loyalty. 
To have someone's back and know that they have yours. To be someone's wingman. You look into the eyes of someone staring back at you, just as scared as you are. You don't see fear. You see a bond. There will never be a moment when you are more connected to another human being than the moment you realize your lives are in each other's hands. Whether you ever see combat or not, you'll see that bond. You will rise to the faith that others have in you. Faith is a home for courage. Belief gives us strength. Trust carries us forward. We weren't just those first women to fly. We were the women after, and the women after that. We were every man and every woman that America ever believed in and our enemies ever fought. And we were living proof that it is a sad, sad mistake indeed to ever underestimate an airman. This is our Air Force. You are a part of it now. We're trusting you with our country. We trust you with our constitution. We trust you with our flag and we trust you with our lives. No one questions your courage. They count on it. No one doubts your commitment. They depend on it. No one is challenging you to prove them wrong. We're trusting you to prove us right. Aim high, Airmen. On Saturday, April 8th, the 127th Air Refueling Group and 127th Mission Support Group participated in an exercise to test the operational readiness of flight crews in the event of an emergency. Alert staff consisting of flight crews from the ARG, security forces, wing safety, and other leadership and emergency response personnel were on call around the clock during the wing's April RSD at the newly renovated alert facility. This is building uh, 1427. It's our new alert facility. Um, this is where the air crew would come and stay if we had a long overnight exercise from anything from one day to 30 days. They could be in this facility. So we have beds, bathrooms, showers, we have a dining area, workout facility, morale area. So just uh, all around building where they could be housed if they needed to be. The facility offers a unique advantage for the alert crews at Selfridge, allowing for a comfortable living space while conducting one of the state's most important missions. Aside from testing the operational readiness of the evaluated unit, these exercises allow for crews to work with other careers and agencies at the base level to both decrease response time and better prepare for the possibility of a real-world scenario. For the Michigan Air National Guard, I am Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann. I'm Staff Sergeant Javon Smith with your look around the Air Force. An Air Force Academy graduate is bound for space this week as NASA astronaut Colonel Jack Fisher travels to the International Space Station. He'll make the six-hour flight to the station 249 miles above the Earth aboard the Russian-made Suez MS-04 spacecraft. Colonel Fisher graduated from the Air Force Academy in 1996 with a bachelor's degree in astronautical engineering. He flew two combat tours in Southwest Asia before becoming an F-22 Raptor test pilot and being selected by NASA. Colonel Fisher will become the 38th Air Force Academy graduate to become an astronaut. The 10th African Partnership flight kicked off this week in Burkina Faso. U.S. Air Forces in Europe and Air Forces Africa airmen joined with participants from Chad, Mali, Niger, Morocco and other nations for an opening ceremony and cultural tour. The African Partnership Flight was designed as a combined learning environment for both U.S. and African partner nations to build aviation capacity, enhance regional cooperation, and increase interoperability. The events also served to help build understanding and collaboration between nations through cultural appreciation. Over the course of one week, instructors comprised of U.S. Air Force airmen will work with airmen from African nations in classroom discussions and workshops about maintenance and logistics support for light utility aircraft. Amateur and professional shutterbugs are welcome to enter the 2017 Air Force Photo Contest starting May 1st. This year's theme, Travel Destinations, was selected because military families tend to travel and visit places they may not have otherwise visited if not for their assignments. Categories include novice and accomplished subcategories for adults and youth categories divided by age, with prizes for the top three winners in each. Participants can learn more about the contest and submit their photos at myairforcelife.com. That's your look around the Air Force.
On Tuesday, March 28th, Selfridge Air National Guard Base hosted a ceremony to unveil the winning design of the 2017 Selfridge Nose Art Competition. Partnering with Macomb Community College, the base received 20 submissions from both military members and art students at the college. Contestants were charged with developing a design that best represents the base, using symbols, logos, and themes from throughout the 100-year history of Selfridge. We've had a wonderful opportunity. We solicited and we said, all right, what are some great ideas? And we had 20 uh, contestants that ended up putting in art that was then judged. We had a distinguished panel. OK, they were kind of randomly selected. But no, we wanted to make sure that we had somebody from our maintenance, from ops. We had from the community partners. All this, a panel that came in, we spread all these wonderful uh, art inputs, these nose art inputs out. Nose art dates back to World War I, when unit insignias were placed on the front of aircraft for unique identification. Initially frowned upon, rules prohibiting it were later relaxed when the extravagant art was seen as a morale boost for air crews. By World War II, the art had become a widespread playful outlet against authority. Along with being featured on two separate aircraft, the design will serve as the official logo of the Selfridge Centennial Celebration and all events leading up to the open house and air show this August 19th and 20th. As we go into this 100th uh, anniversary this summer, 19 and 20 August, we're going to have our open house air show. These aircraft are going to be on static display. We're going to have a couple hundred thousand of our closest friends out here with an amazing air show with the Air Force Thunderbirds. Uh, it'll be the culmination of all these events we're going to be doing this summer out here at Selfridge. Uh, and one, it's again, just a wonderful opportunity to celebrate with our community partners that make all this happen. Judges narrowed the selection down to three entries, Marianne Pupka, Rachel Barton, and Scott Whiteside. In the end, it was the design of Tech Sergeant Rachel Barton of the 127th wing that was selected as best overall. That's our wingman of our winner, Rachel Barton. <laughs> So this wonderful artwork is going to end up being a logo for us. It, uh, it's going to be part of Selfridge history. Check it out on the airplane. So this is your artwork that's going to be part of our centennial. Very well done. Thank you. When inspiration strikes, um, you know, a contest like this, it's, it's really a dream to be able to have my artwork up on the plane. 20 inputs that we had in this contest right there, but you can kind of see that was kind of capturing the spirit of Michigan, uh, the, the eagle that's out there that's talking about our freedom, that uh, you know, myself has been here with our nation's defense all for a long time. Uh, so we're just capturing that spirit. It's going to be wonderful to have these on our aircraft for almost the next year while we're having this celebration. The fascination and appeal of news art continues today, and now the members of Selfridge have a symbol to call their own. For the Michigan Air National Guard, I am Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann. None of us were saints, far from it. We just refused to believe that the line between right and wrong was hard to see. People always know the right thing to do, but they hesitate because they think of themselves. The things we did, we did because we cared more about duty than glory. We cared more about getting it done than getting a medal. We never thought, how could I do this? We thought, how could we not do this? What were we going to do? 
let somebody else do our job because it was hard? We want you to fly this jet through the sound barrier. Yes, sir. We need you to jump out of a balloon in outer space to see if a human can survive the fall. Yes, sir. We need you to fly a bomber from an aircraft carrier for a raid on Tokyo, and you probably won't come back. Yes, sir. Selflessness only means something when you have something to give. Airmen, you have so much inside you, you have no idea. You will think of your mission, and you will think of your country, and you will not hesitate. Some people think we're trained so that we don't think. We just react. No. In the Air Force, we're just trained to think faster. We are required to think at three times the speed of sound. A hundred billion terabytes come at you in a nanosecond. And 300 million American heartbeats are waiting and wondering what you're going to do to keep them safe. Right now. Fear is natural. The most primitive human instinct is to save your own skin. To think of yourself first. To wonder, who will make that sacrifice for me? If I'm watching over the world, who's watching over me? We are. Aim high, airmen. We have a huge retention problem. Unfortunately, force shaping has cut the maintenance community a little bit heavier than anticipated. Uh, it's known that across the board for maintenance, we're about 4,000 maintainers short right now. Uh, unfortunately, RPA is feeling the brunt of that, and especially with trying to spin up the new programs such as F-35, uh, we're not going to lose the A-10 anytime soon. That we have proven to the rest of the joint world that, hey, I need more of that Air Force ISR capability because it's better than anything we can do in, indigenously or internally. It's global in perspective. Uh, we need more of it. I think that's the biggest challenge is we've been so good at our job that everyone recognizes they need more of what we can provide. That, that's exactly it. We're, we do have a lot of pride in what we do just with the, the little amount of people we had and, and being able to get everything done and uh, having the FMC rate that we do is bar none to any other uh, legacy aircraft in, in the Air Force. The, pro the difference you'll see in an RPA operational unit is that they're flying 24-7. That's a little bit different. And a bigger challenge is how then do you have, as a squadron commander, former squadron commander, how do you take care of your people in 24-7 operations? How do you uh, make sure that their families are taken care of? How do you get them to uh, do training on a regular basis. How do you get them to meet the demands that we all have as Air Force members on a routine basis? I think the biggest advice that I would give uh, my youngest airmen that have come in is uh, patience. Once you've served long enough, you've seen enough challenges and enough strain and difficult times throughout your career but the important part is to realize everything is cyclic. One thing that I've seen throughout my career, uh, no matter where I've deployed, no matter what the mission was, everywhere I've gone, uh, the airmen on the flight line will always get it done at whatever cost. Whether it's staying past 12 hours to make sure something's done right, whether it's missing a weekend, missing a holiday, maintainers never say die. Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. Dateline, Saltbridge Field, Michigan. America has entered World War I, and a new air base is created near Mount Clemens. The nation needs its sons and daughters to answer the call to service on a new frontier in the wild blue yonder. Now, Team Selfridge presents an event so big it has been 100 years in the making. See aerial planes and displays from every age at the 2017 Selfridge Open House and Air Show. Walk 
through the history of 100 years of Selfridge as we highlight some of America's most treasured historic military aircraft. Take a tour through the decades as we celebrate a century of service right here in Metro Detroit. You'll see historic warbirds and today's military aircraft based at Selfridge and serving our nation today, including the A-10 Thunderbolt II, lovingly known as the Warthog. Flying gas station known as the KC-135 Stratotanker. The Army's twin rotor workhorse, the CH-47 Chinook helicopter. See how the Coast Guard saves lives on the Great Lakes with the HH-65 Dolphin helicopter. Learn about how the Department of Homeland Security protects America's borders with the Great Lakes Air and Marine Wing. Bring the kids, bring the neighbors, as you see ground displays, flying demonstrations, and more at Michigan's largest military air show and open house. Headlining the 2017 Centennial Air Show, will be the world's premier fighter jet demonstration team, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. August 19 through 20, 2017, Selfridge Air National Guard Base, free admission and free parking. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> 